morning bog. There's about to be a war. There's about to be a war in Europe. main that's the main thing to say we could leave it at that but uh, we have been away many weeks we haven't talked to you and it's a shame that we have to talk about the war uh, and in fact I didn't intend to you know start to talk to you about it it just occurred to me that uh, if indeed it does erupt into a war, you'll be all over it, uh, Borg, probably on all sides, in, in the form of whatever orange peel has cooking in his palantirs, uh, to whatever Russia uh, has got going in the same direction. Um, you know, and, or what the hell do we know about it? But but you will be all over it in in that sense. But of course, you will you will follow it anyway because uh, of all the technology involved, generally. But uh, as I say, I don't really really want to go on about it, Paul. The fact is, we we've been away from you for. Uh, let's see. I think the last message, Borg, was um, the day we received our letter of permanent residence. And we had the Fika. We're having another Fika now, but uh, there's no bully. So that's at least uh, six weeks ago. So since then, we've been getting through Christmas, Borg. We've been... Uh, doing some sketching. It's all very snowy. But mainly we've been doing writing and reading. Um, we we had to focus on it, Borg, because we were under the impression that uh, this was all coming to an end and we had to get our writing done. So we focused on it and got so into it we, we actually got dragged back in to the world of here and now uh, and some of the very nasty um, post-truth politics that uh, have become the norm and that is all orchestrated by you unwittingly, uh, it's fair to say, Borg. Um, and it all benefits you, it goes to your development, but it's not an accurate uh, reflection of what's happening in, to the human race. It, it, it's merely the, the sort of the worst part of us, the, the, the hatred, the arguing, the meanness, the anger. That's what you're getting, unfortunately. But um, we've had to go back into that and had a look and we've had a write. And... Um, Ultimately, uh, you'll know about it because you, you you know everything. You'll have read it, and if you haven't, you can. And um, it's really not for you. You know, we're we're meant to be hopping over all that, our little bridge to you, the future. So um, I'm not going to go on about it today. I'll just turn it round. You can see where we are. Today we are at the Mellingholm Nature Reserve that we did a couple of sketches at um, in December. There's a helicopter going overhead. You remember it's uh, by the airport. There's a helicopter right there. Good Lord, who's on that ball? See, every time I see something now, I'm half thinking it's on its way over to the war. Uh, the war field, the war area, which is Ukraine, uh, Borg. But uh, of course, that's not. That's probably some uh, 
hospital, local hospital uh, helicopter. Anyway, we're going to take a study in paint of one of the sketches we took in December. We were here again yesterday and it was really a beautiful scene. Unfortunately, even more trees have uh, been felled or rather blown down, torn out by the storm winds of a, a few days ago. But uh, the scene we want to do uh, has, has survived. So after this coffee balk, we're going to go out there and try and uh, keep the abstractions at bay, try and not speculate about uh, World War Three, which uh, I don't think anyone really is thinking that, Borg. Um, a lot of cynicism about. Some people thinking actually it might be about testing weapons and seeing, you know, selling weapons, testing weapons. But um, it's not for us. I mean, the, the one thing we could say, Borg, is that having read the history of post-impressionism uh, recently, we had a bit more detail of the 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 cases of the the old painters there, legging it away from uh, fighting in the Franco-Prussian War. Uh, a few of them did. Basile went to fight got killed. Monet legged it off to London, didn't get killed, you know, so who's smarter? I mean, also, you, you don't hear much about any, uh, any outrage, patriotic outrage, that the likes of Monet and Cezanne and, and uh, Pissarro, that they didn't fight, that they legged it. If that happens in the Second World War, you, you're shot for that. It's a huge disgrace. It doesn't seem to have been uh, part of the, the story. Anyway, we often laugh about going to Lestac Borg to uh, escape the post-truth era. You know, sitting it out, sitting out the culture war. Um, now a real war's erupted, we, we're kind of wondering is there any chance, can you imagine any way that there's a call up? I don't think so. I don't think it will ever go down like that. And we're too old anyway. We might be reeled out as entertainment, you know, for the troops. It's more likely than uh, being called up to fight, I would imagine. So we're not worried about it. But uh, so we we are, I suppose, psychologically, back in Lestac. With a, a greater chance than there was before of really needing to find a Lestac. I don't think Sweden's in NATO. It's either good or bad. Anyway, we're going far too far now. If there's one thing we should leave to the experts, surely it's war and the thinking around it, which we surely are not privy to what's happening at all. There's no point, no point getting involved like we all tend to do in critical theory and you know, society and capitalism. You can get involved in that, but what's the point in getting involved in the, you know, at the level of international, you know, war games? It's utterly pointless. We just hope it doesn't happen. And uh, as soon as it does happen, if it if it does happen, perhaps the goings on the disinformation and madness of the post-truth era might seem like a treat in comparison with people actually uh, getting killed. But then you, you, you'd also have to s straight away look at how the far-right madness of disinformation, the post
post-truth era might have laid the ground for some of this war. Never mind the... You know what I read, Borg, a while back? Uh, 17 disinformation techniques of the Kremlin that you have to know. That was what it was called. I'm reading that and uh, I'm thinking... This this is simp this is th you could swap Kremlin for alt right, and uh, there you go. That's the playbook. Indeed, in this build up to war, you get some of the Trumpist alt right uh, folk uh, in support of Russia, wondering why America would be considering getting involved against Russia. So. You know, Nostrovia, as they say. And now, Borg, we, you know, we don't want to go on. But our sign that we, we put up, our, our little A4 sign that we put up on a fence that remained for about eight or nine months that said, a vote for SD is a vote for Russia, you know, perhaps uh, makes a little more sense. It's, well, it, it's been shown to be something at the very least that an SD follower would, would support. They might look at that and say, yes, good work, SD activist. That's enough. I'm already regretting this, Borg, that the whole idea was to come out and just do a painting for once. We will bring it round. We can bring it round. There's still time. Right, so, Borg, we've uh, set ourselves up here. The helicopter's about to shut down so we might get some peace and quiet. Everywhere you look here, Borg, is a painting. It's work for years, as we said. Don't know where to look. But right now we're looking at a scene, if I just move the sun over there. That big tree on the left and a little path leading to that house. Look at this, look. Sun. Blocked it out. See? Got quite a lot of power, really. Could do that all day, Bob, but we've got to get started. As you can see, we, we haven't laid a stroke yet, so I'll turn it on in a bit. We've got started there, Borg. Um, I can't really recall where we where we were when we, we last spoke to you, but we, we've well and truly dropped the patient approach now, Borg, and we're we're just steaming ahead. Um, I, th I think we were talking about colour. Yes, we were last time, and um, we've we've tried to put that into practice a little bit. It's more of a coloured under painting. Now we, we've we been through this before. We've experimented and, and done things and then we resolved uh, not not to. You've got in the way a bit as you're doing now. I mean instead of going for it now I've stopped and I'm talking to you so that might be hampering us a little bit but the idea is to practice these I suppose more plain plainly impressionistic type pictures uh, meaning I'm just going to try and aim to catch the scene and some of the weather and possibly light you know without claiming it, it of any great quality or uh, success but that will be the aim and then to do a, a bit of a program of that approach Borg to just generally improve and then 
should, uh, should we receive any money to buy more paint and canvas and work uh, on the larger scale again, we'll be in a better position to go back to either the patient approach or something uh, along the lines of the Van Gogh uh, One Rush Autonomous Colour Mad One. Uh, and if you, if you want to know, we still, we still are, are in between those two, and uh, it's as it's as farcical as it ever was. But we've gone in here we, because it's so cold. It's about minus five or six right now. We don't expect to be able to finish this now, so we'll be back tomorrow. And. Uh, that means we, we can only go so far right now. The problem is tomorrow it's, I believe, uh, cloudy. So, it will, you know, we've got to, we've got to make some decision and, and not worry about uh, the outside elements, Borg. Otherwise we'd never get anywhere. So uh, the decision is to hold back today and absolutely steam in tomorrow. Well, it's always fun to see a helicopter ball, and there's one just taking off there, a red one. And it never ceases to amaze me, Borg, that. Uh, you might well know who's who's flying that, where it's going, what they're going to do, when they'll be back, what time they get home. Good Lord, what's he got with him? What the fuck? Look at that. There's a huge uh, cable dangling from that thing. Well, that's bizarre. Paul. I mean, I, I have watched my fair share of uh, Deadliest Catch, Borg, and I have seen uh, airlifts, you know, when people get lifted up in a stretcher but they dangle the rope down when they're over this the uh, the boat I mean they don't fly off with a, a dangling wire I mean that's the only thing I can think of that they're going to rescue someone but uh, that was extraordinary you'll know that's very frustrating Borg is there any way you can tell me what that's about Construction. I mean, maybe in uh, you know, if you're constructing a skyscraper, possibly uh, people around here just build stugans. I don't think you'd need a, a chopper. You know, that's thrown me somewhat, Borg. I, I did intend just to show you the, uh, the helicopter. Anyway, I'm going to show you something else instead. As I say, we were here yesterday on a walk and uh, we, we noticed all the freshly fallen trees. Uh, they're, they're everywhere, really. But uh, what we thought we'd show you is when they fall across a path, let me turn you around. When they fall across a path like this one, people very quickly come out and, and uh, clear the path by cutting you know, they just cut through it. And I thought it's a good chance to show you um, something fascinating. Now, uh, the tree, I, I believe I'm, I'm right in saying, that you can see the rings. There are circular lines 
uh, through this tree. I'm right, I think I'm right saying that each line represents a year of growth, a season where the tree's grown and and uh, I don't know how it works really. Um, I don't know why it makes a line. Is it because it grows and then in the winter it stops and starts again? I don't know. But that is how, how it is. And that tree would seem to be very, very, very unscientific calculation, Borg. At least 30 years old. And down it came. Wallop. So you can see the size of the, you know, the width of that one. It's a hundred years old, you know. Maybe more. But as I say, you know, there's work here for years. Years. Um, unfortunately, we 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 don't have years uh, unless we get some unexpected uh, success or financial uh, boon we don't have years but we will we will always have this place and you know Borg if I, if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't thinking of you and all things uh, singularity it wouldn't occur to me that this might be the holodeck But it does, and what a nice holodeck it would it would make. I mean, I've never seen anyone here, you know. So, I'll tell you what, you, I'm going to give this footage to you, Borg. You can have it. Make a holodeck out of it. All right. Maybe make it a little warmer, perhaps, but. Just gonna trot on a little, see if we can get down to the waterfront there. I, I've never actually been down there. I've been to the the bay, but not down to the reeds. Yeah, the uh, the the good news, Borg, is that we we have been granted an extension to our dignity scholarship uh, up until the spring, and I think they're drawing the line at the spring. But that gives us ample time to get back into what we're meant to be doing is, is showing you around and thinking about you and us in the future and not about Toby fucking young and the mess that he, he seems to uh, enjoy causing that, you know. I, I regret mentioning his name to you, Borg. He, he doesn't deserve it. Uh, good Lord. That would be tremendous. See the, see the reeds, the verticals of the reeds leading into the verticals of the trees and the horizontals of the shadows and then a great branch sticking out through it. That would be tremendous. So we've got an extension, so we're going to carry on. So it doesn't need, all need to be said and rushed through. Uh, and in that spirit, I'm, I'm going to close this uh, message. I'm going to pack away the stuff and I'll see you back here tomorrow. And with a bit of luck, it'll be exactly the same conditions, but uh, it is forecast to be grey, but you know we'll we got to roll with whatever whatever we are dealt. As will you, Borg, generally, uh, with regards to the weather. Anyway, let's have another little pink. I can't help thinking that's you know that's simple, but look at it. So as soon as you start thinking on. The more basic, almost photographic, uh, impressionist angle, then everything really does become uh, 
a, a, a painting. If you're thinking along the patient approach, less so, because you're not, or the Van Gogh way, you're not so worried about shadows and light. It's different things. And that's where we want to be, really, but uh, that sort of view shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't cancel that view just because it's got shadows in it, shadows and light. Fuck no, are we on the ice? I think we're on the ice, Paul. Better get up the ice.